Welcome to Black and Well in the LBC, sponsored by the Black Health Equity Fund. I'm glad to say that I'm all three of those things, and I hope that you are well, wherever you may be. My name is Percy Dags III. I was born, raised, and educated right here in the city of Long Beach, and I've been an actor for 25 years. I've been a husband to my lovely wife, Jontil Gerard, for almost six years, a father to my son, Percy IV, and my daughter, Nia Simone. This virus has had a huge impact on me personally, as I'm sure many of you, uh, from my wives, elders, and her family, my peers, family members, and most recently, my grandfather, who battled four different types of cancer, and recently his final battle was with COVID-19. Professionally, I would equate trying to make it in the entertainment industry as trying to make it to the NBA two or three times a week. And when they canceled those tryouts, I'm sure you can imagine how challenging it has been to find work, continue to provide for your family, as well as figure out what your next move is. Um, that's my story. I'm sure all of you have one that is similar, if not worse. Recently, I had the opportunity to discuss the coronavirus with several black men. We sat and we talked about how it's affected them as small business owners, their personal lives, and when it comes to the youth, how it's affected their lives as a student. I also had a chance to get a few of my most lingering questions answered by a well-respected local doctor and pastor. Here we focus on the impact of COVID-19 on small business owners, and specifically Jamari Curligan, owner of the Juice City Entertainment Barbershop, my personal barber. See, barbershops have historically been a special gathering place for black men. As Cedric the Entertainer told us in the Barbershop movie, a barber is more than just a guy who sits around all day. They're a counselor, a fashion expert, a style expert, a life coach, somebody who can help you fix your love life. I can truly testify to this, mainly because the barbershop is a spot that I'm guaranteed to run into somebody I know, especially right here at home in Long Beach somebody I went to elementary school with, somebody that can help me stay connected to my homegrown roots. More than that, the barbershop is a spot where I can reconnect with the youth, maybe plant a seed, get an idea of what their everyday experiences may be like and what they face out there. It's a place where I can talk to the elders, my peers, and the younger generation about current events and topics that concern all of us. And at the least, get a real good laugh. Let me take you back there for a second and introduce you to Jamari Curley. After establishing your business and uh, finally, you know, building it with your own hands from the ground up, the pandemic hit, man. So how has that affected your business? Um, what happened? What changed? Man, um, it, was a, it was a tough, tough 2020, I'll put it to you that way. Everything was just going smooth. Finally got my business up and going. Got them on appointments, got everything going mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. January, February, March, then boom. What was it, April? Yeah. I just had to shut it down. March, yeah, it was March, 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 April. March the 13th. March, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. We finished playing basketball. I just March, know I got yeah, the yeah. word, and they was like, hey, shut it down, because we don't know what what this virus is. Yeah. So I was scared. I'm like, man, I don't, I'm not trying to get nothing. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, you know, I had, I, had, I had to shut it down. It was yeah. the right thing to do, you know. And at some point, you were at a different location, so how did you manage having to close your doors at your other location and then move into this location, which is uh, an improvement upon your last location at, as far as space is concerned, which services your client base a lot better, but the traffic flow, how did that change? Even having more space, but not uh, maybe the clientele coming in as you, the same way you used to. Yeah, it was just like, once I, once I shut it down, I felt like I lost all my clients. That's how I really felt. Like inside, I felt like I was just like, I had no clientele no more. Because you know, you don't want, I mean, I know I have my clientele or whatever, but you know, you don't want everybody coming to your house or yeah, going yeah. to everybody's house trying to cut their hair. So it's like, you know what? I'm gonna sit back and see what this coronavirus really is. You know what I mean? So I was just like, man, I'm at a standstill right now. I'm just, you know, then after a while, you know, your, your funds get low. After you ain't working, you, I mean, you haven't been on a steady routine for what? 15 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. getting up mm -hmm. every morning, going to work. Now it's like, okay, we got this coronavirus thing. We got to stay in the house, shut the business down, and figure it out. It's just mm -hmm. like, man. I know, I understand, because when you was figuring it out, I was figuring it out, because I missed you, man. You talk about being at a standstill. I was standing still in my bathroom yeah. trying to figure <laughs> out how to do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody trying to find a way to get, get around it, and, and, and you know, yeah, man, you, you got to come to the barbershop to get your hair done. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, I just, I just was just trying to take it one day at a time, man. Just figuring it out. Like, I didn't know what my next move was gonna be. To be honest. Yeah. As far as opening up the shop and, you know, getting walk-ins and, right. you know. Just the business, everything I worked for. I didn't know what I was going to do. And you had to open and close several times, probably, right? I mean, because yeah. of the California, yeah. we was, had a lot at of At one point, I want to say it was, uh, uh, well, so that happened with, what did you say, uh, March? March 13th. When so it so when, when did they open it back up? You want to say June? Yeah, sometime July, early somewhere around there? Yeah, right before the, right, yeah, that, well, yeah, up, before like, July, what, couple maybe days, another yeah. month, right. maybe, at the most, shut it right back down. So, you know. Did you deal with a lot of anxiety, man, like being in the shop? Or how, how did you handle, uh, because everybody doesn't necessarily respect what COVID was doing uh, to different people's lives, man, and the, the, how dangerous it actually was. I mean, obviously, for quite a bit of time, some people thought it was a hoax. Some people thought it was, had a lot of different ideas uh, and views on it. So how was it trying to establish your rules here and having people come in and did everybody tend to kind of honor uh, so, you, you know, a lot of people didn't really believe uh, like this was real. Right. And, um, you know, I, 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 I had to enforce it a lot. Like, you know, this is a business. I had to go by the rules. So, yeah, I had to, I had to make a lot of people, you know, make everybody wear their masks. Like, if you was to go into Walmart or go to the mall or go anywhere, yeah. you got to respect the rules. So, yeah. it was a little different. But a lot, at first, a lot of people was just, you know, I don't believe in that. I, I, I ain't gonna get sick. Sure enough, it's happening to people. Absolutely. So, you know, it, it was a little, it's kind of tough, man. Yeah. It's kind of tough, like trying to figure it, just trying to figure it out. Um, but I just kept going, you know, mm. so. But see, but you, you know, think about you, Juicy, you got a name. So as soon as the people say, oh, Juicy didn't change spot, they gonna totally start coming back. I mean, yeah, you, I mean, everybody tell me that. No, they will. Like, Watch. They, they, they're they're still coming back to Like you, I said, me, I, I thought that, you know, man, I lost everything. And no, then, no, no. It's just a pause. It's, uh, this somebody is a pause. Else, like you said, they tell me, hey, they just waiting on you. Yeah, that's all they, they do. Just they just wait. So, that kind of helped me out in the aspect, you know, yeah. of, you know, keeping it going. Yeah. You know, right. trying to figure it out. I'll tell you this. Everyone gets rewarded, I believe, in my heart for doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you went through early on doing the right thing and being unpopular, making people put their mask on, and you just stay invested in this. And those people, you know, I know you look like you know how, how to do social media and get things out there. You will be rewarded for doing the right thing. Yeah, with the social media, I mean, it's cool. But I like, at first, like before, I used to do a lot of hand in hand, mm -hmm. you know, go to the Walmart, go to the schools. I That's old go, school. I can't go to the schools no more and pass out business cards. I got other barbers in here that I, you know, need to get going. And, you know, the social media, it only goes so far. You got to actually but put those, in the, but, but those school kids, yeah. they own their phone. Yeah. So gotcha. you put one of them fellas in charge gotcha. that come up in here, hey, let your brothers know they send in. Instagram DMs and you got three more customers. It, it, it kind of put, but at the same time, the walk-in customers or the customers that's new with this Corona thing, they kind of skeptical of stepping into the shop mm -hmm. if you don't already know this person. And like I said, trying to build your clientele up with doing the Corona, it was it's, it was a little hard. It was a little harder because, like I said, you can't go to the school, you can't go to the to the mall or you know pass out hand to hand with people. Right. And has it become more competitive because a lot of barbers who don't have a brick and mortar business have had to become mobile. So a lot of people are probably becoming a little more comfortable in their homes, getting somebody to come through and cut their hair and yeah. not feeling like they have to uh, get out there, right? I, I talked to a couple of other barber owners and they shops. So, you know, with this, you know, a lot of their workers decided to stay home and mm -hmm. work from home or whatever. So now that it's back up and going, they choose to stay there and, you know, work from home or, you know, take the easy way out. Right. And, you know, the owner, that's the one that takes the, you know, the, right, the, yeah. the loss yeah. towards yeah. the end, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. So, you know, you just, I'm just blessed to, you know, still push through all of this and be up and running. Mm -hmm. But right. one thing I know about you, man, that's great is you've led by example. Like he, like he mentioned, I noticed that you stepped up your marketing game with social media, man. You've got a videographer in here showing the talent of not only you, but you highlight all the other barbers in this chair, which uh, elevates your business, elevates their business, man, which keeps you guys going. So not only have you kind of been innovative in your approach, you lead by example, man. You're the first man in, last man out. 
and um, that, that keeps things going, man. So I think that perseverance has kind of been the key thing for a lot of people in trying to overcome COVID. Um, so, you know, I hear you, man. I, as an actor, I've experienced some different things in our business too, as far as an opening and closing and not being able to actually get out and audition, having to self-tape and do those things and look for work at home on your own, which is challenging, man. But um, persevering and, and dealing with uh, how the, the business is changing, the new norms, um, it was critical. I want to thank Elite Skills Development for giving me the opportunity to bring this important information to you. I hope that you've learned as much as I have. Peace.